Hi everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. For today's VBOTS tutorial video, we'll be doing a ball following robot and we'll be writing the controller code in C++. If you're looking for controller code for a wall following robot in other programming languages such as C and Python, look for links in the description below. I'll include all of the timings here and in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start by creating a new project. Click on the menu bar, Wizards, New Project Directory. Click Continue. Give your project a name. I'm calling it Wall Follower Robot. Click Continue. Give a name to your world. I'm calling mine world underscore maze. Make sure to select Add a Rectangular Arena and click Continue. Click Done and this will load a new world with a rectangle arena. We'll start by increasing the size of our arena. Click on the rectangular arena on the scene tree. Click on Floor Size. Make X and Y is equal to 2. Next, we'll add a robot in our VBOTS world. To do this, click on the plus sign. Next, type epoch in the search bar. Select the epoch robot and click add to add the robot. Make sure to save your work. Next, we'll create our maze using walls. Once again, click on the plus sign and type wall in the search bar. Select wall and click on add to add this wall to our VBOTS world. As you can see, it created a huge wall. Let's change the size. Click on the wall in your scene tree on the left hand side. Select size and change y is equal to 0.1 meter and z is equal to 0.01 meter. To make it easy to reshape the wall or any object in VBOTS, let's add the coordinate system. From the menu bar, select view, optional rendering and show coordinate system. To rotate the wall, click on the rotation option under wall on the scene tree. With x equal to 0, y equal to 1, z equal to 0, make your angle equal to 1.57 radians. Next, let's move the wall by changing the translation values. Let's make x equal to minus 0.07 meter. Let's add another wall. Select wall and use keyboard shortcut to copy and duplicate it by pasting. Once again, by changing the translation and rotational values, you can move the wall in different configurations. Using multiple walls, you can build your own maze. If you want to use the maze shown in this video, you can download it from the link in the description below. Now that we have our VBOTS world set up, Let's work on writing the controller code in C++. To get started, go to the VBOTS menu bar, Wizards, and click on New Robot Controller. Click Continue. Choose your programming language as C++ and click Continue. Give a name to your controller and click Continue. Make sure to select Open Text Editor and click Done. As you can see, this will open up a text editor on the right side of your VBOTS window. The comments give us a good understanding of how our controller code should look like. For the first part, you will initialize your motors and sensors. Next, you have your while loop. The initialization happens once, but the main while loop keeps running as long as your simulation is running. Once the simulation ends, it goes to do any cleanup and then exits the code. Inside your while loop, you will first read sensor values, then process these sensor values to make decision in terms of where your robot should drive, and accordingly give motor commands to drive your robot. So let's get started. First, we'll change this time step to a global variable and use the constant value of 64. Delete this and make sure to change it in the while loop condition. Next, let's initialize the motor. 
for this we have to include the motor header make sure to keep saving your vbots controller code now to initialize our motors we will need the motor name for epoch this is left wheel motor and right wheel motor it's included in the vbots documentation alternatively you can find this information in the vbots world as well go to the vbots scene tree click on epoch right click and click on convert to base nodes inside robot children hinge joint device rotational motor name you can see that it's called left wheel motor similarly you can also look at the next hinge joint to find the right wheel motor with this information let's go back to our vbots controller code i'm using get motor function to create left motor and right motor Next, we'll initialize them by setting position to infinity and velocity to zero. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. Our next step is to initialize the distance sensor. For this, we'll include the distance sensor header. EPUC has eight distance sensor called proximity sensors from PS0 to PS7. I'm using get distance sensor to initialize them and enable them with the time step. Make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. Next, we'll read the sensor values. In this project, we'll opt for a left wall following robot. For this case, we only care about detecting the wall on left and in front of us. Using the proximity sensor 5 and 7, we can detect wall on the left and front. By experimenting, I found a value of 80 to work well for me. Anything beyond 80 means I have detected the wall. Similarly, I'll use proximity sensor 7 to detect the front wall. Now let's understand the working of the left wall following algorithm. Now let's understand the wall following logic that will be used to solve the maze. As the name suggests, the robot will follow a wall. You can choose a side, I'm choosing left. The robot has to drive in such a way to follow the left wall. When the wall is on its left and there is nothing in front of the robot, it can simply drive forward. 
If it detects a wall in front of the robot, it is essentially in a corner. It should drive right to continue. Now, if there is an upcoming left turn, the wall on the left side will disappear. So if there is no wall on the left, the robot has to take left. And the same concept will also work for a U-turn. This brings us to the last case. That is, there is no wall on the left-hand side and there is a wall in front of the robot. Since we are following the left wall, our robot needs to turn such that the wall is on the left side. This can be done by simply turning right on the spot. With this understanding, we'll essentially be detecting the walls and accordingly determining the speed for our left and right motor. So let's create two variables to store the speed for each left and right motors. Let's set the default value to max. For epoch, that is 6.28. I'll create a global variable with this value. If you observe the four cases carefully, you'll see commonalities amongst two cases. If there's a wall in front of it, drive right. So let's start with that. I have covered how to drive a differential drive robot in a previous video. I'll include the link in the description below and on the top right corner. Next, if there is a wall on the left, we will drive straight. This brings us to our last case. If there is no wall in front or left side, we've driven too far ahead and we should take left. I had to experiment a few times and I found that max speed by 8 worked well for me. You might have to fine tune it based on your robot configuration and make sure to keep saving your VBOTS controller code. The last step is to give this speed to our actuators, that is motors. To run a C++ code, we have to build it. Use the gear icon to build this code. Seems I've made a typo. Let's fix that. Once again, save your VBOTS controller code and build it using the gear icon. Also, make sure to set this controller for your robot. So go to the VBOTS scene tree and under robot, look for an option called controller. Click select and from your list, select the controller that you just wrote. Click OK and make sure to save your VBOTS world. So this change is permanent. Now let's give this a try by running the VBOT simulation. Click on the play button.
As you can see, the robot is following the wall. However, it came too close to the left wall and almost collided. I would encourage you to pause the video and think for a few seconds on how to resolve this. If you observe carefully, we can use this sensor to detect when we've come too close to the wall and then use that to guide our robot to drive a little further out if it comes too close. Let's write that in our code. It's sensor 6 and I'll call this the left corner. Let's save the VBOTS controller code and build it again. Once again, click on the plus sign to run the VBOTS simulation. As you can see, when the robot gets too close, it drives away and when it's too further away, it drives towards the wall. If you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a like and tell me about it in the comments below. Before you go, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you have any questions or doubts, use the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.